technology is a phenomenon that we seem not to be able to do without. In the past few years, it has advanced our world in ways that we couldn't even imagine. Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of the Game Changers podcast. My name is Quinn Sergis, and it's a privilege and pleasure to be here with you, as usual. My next guest is a young man who has technology at heart. But as you listen, you realize that he has so many other passions that help build his day job. His name is Gideon Meda, and it's my privilege to introduce him to you. Those of you who are watching this episode on YouTube will realize that most of this episode is audio. We ran into t- some technical issues, and therefore, we don't have video throughout the episode. However, as usual, we do have some entertaining visual stimulants that can help you enjoy the episode. In any case, happy listening. Hello, Gideon. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing quite fine, Queen. I'm doing quite fine indeed. Thanks for asking. Happy to hear, man. You know, I always like to have like minds on this podcast. Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Gideon Mira. Well, Gideon Gerald Mira, as you normally see as Gideon G Mira, for those of you that know me. Um, I'm born in November, November 25th. I'm a November born and I'm 23 years old. Uh, right now, I'm an IT technician by profession and still training. Also, I run my small business, well, solo business by myself called Gideon's PC Repairs and Solutions. And also, I'm a car enthusiast. I really love cars and racing. And I also am a singer as well. So I love music. In- interesting. Yes. So I see that you're a man of many passions. Yes, I am. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Okay, Gideon. So you mentioned that you do tech work for a living. Yes, I do. How did you become interested in tech? Well, it started from a young age. I, I, I want to be honest and say that it was actually somewhat of a, of a, of a thing that, that makes a lot more money than something else that I wanted to do when I was younger. But however, what, since I went into Dublin, Dublin in it for that, I realized I actually got, I got a passion for it because in that day, well, also I was into PC gaming as well. Still into PC gaming, but not um, hardcore like Call of Duty more into racing. But yeah, but I got into that from there. So by just tinkering and playing around the computers, growing up with computers in, in your home and Windows XP and Windows 7, 8, you know, growing up on that, oh yeah, Windows Vista and just being able to tweak and, 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 and to tune up and to, and to actually push your computer to try and make you run that favorite game of yours, Queen, it just got me to thinking that, yeah, I have to get into this field a lot more because it's just, it's just amazing. It's fun. Lovely. So, I see your passion for gaming informed your passion for tech in general. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. It really did. Because at the time, I, I just didn't have... I couldn't... Well, I mean, at the time, I could. my parents couldn't really buy me a gaming computer. If I would tell them, they would tell me, yeah, that's too expensive and stuff like that. I mean, at least now I make my own money. But at the time, I just didn't have a gaming computer, so I had to use what I have. I had to push and try to see if I can get something, get some part something to try and get that to, 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 to run the game I wanted to run. So, at the time. Got you. Got you, man. Okay, so, yeah, how did that passion turn into a business? When did that happen and how did that happen? Right. So, it actually started in, I would I maybe want to say 2020, 21, when it was, it was a time where I just literally, like, I, I left school in general. I, I, I more or less say, like, I actually just, like, dropped out in a sense because of financial issues. But um, at that time, I didn't really, I, I had goals, I had ideas, I had visions, but like at, I reached a point in my life where it was just like, I was kind of on a low until my brother realized that and he just told me, hey, I see you into tech and stuff like that, bro. You're working on computers and stuff like that. Why don't you just um, start doing repairs and whatnot and make money from there? And, you know, and I was like, ah, I'll give it a shot. And at the same time, he actually introduced me to reach that portal with my, my same brother, my little brother, Gil Chris Miller. And I started to read that port out and talk about skills and how skills can make you money and these types of things like that. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me give it a shot. And it's, it's just actually from there, I, it started from that. That's how it started. So Interesting. Yes. And you know that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, 
is one of the, I would say personally, it's one of the best self-help books out there. Because it really breaks down something that we are not really taught in school. And that's financial literacy. What are some of mm-hmm. the things that's a fact. that you learned when you were studying or reading that book? Well, one thing that, that one thing, well, the three things I took back was the uh, one was that um, there's a difference between liabilities and assets. And some people believe that what they have are assets, but they're actually liabilities. So, for example, well, then I, well, first, a liability is something that when you put money into it, you don't get any money. You don't get any money from it. Liabilities can fall under um, things that pleasurable things, consumer products, you know, these types of things. And assets, on the other hand, when you put money into them, you actually get money back so it also ties into to, to the same principle of make money work for you so that's what the asset is um another thing i've learned is um in order for you to make money you need to have a skill or you need to learn skills over the course of your lifetime so a lot of the times you can you can actually sell your skills to make money market your skills to make money and the third thing is that um take advice from people who actually are financially I'll not say like financially free because maybe some people haven't gotten that yet, but people are actually financially educative or financially um literate, I would say. How are financial literacy? So that's the things that I took back from Richard Porat. Interesting. Yes. So did you apply any of these principles when you became an entrepreneur? Yes, I yes I did. I actually I actually learned a lot about well I've actually learned a lot about investing and actually understanding what an asset is. So a lot of the times I would maybe look for little things I can put my money in so I can maybe get something back out of it. Especially when it comes to skills and education and online products and these types of things. So I've actually applied um, a lot of the knowledge. For me personally, Queen, I would say like I think the biggest thing that, that really the biggest thing that I applied from that book is actually is actually going out there and making it happen. Got you. Yes. Right. And that, that's the only way we can reach any measure of success, you know. Of we have to just go out there and give it our best shot and make it happen. So I like of that. Of course, man. Yes, man. Of course. Okay. Now I know as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. in particular... As a young entrepreneur, you would have faced challenges. Yes, of course. Tell me some of the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? Well, I think my first challenge was actually learning how to deal with, with customers in general. That's my like my first my first challenge, how to deal with clients and knowing how people are in gen- mm-hmm. and knowing how people are. Because um sometimes you may be doing the work that you do and my goal is not how many on systems or whatnot, but then sometimes some things happen and then you realize how you can actually explain to them properly and a lot of uh, you know how to explain to them properly and actually knowing that at the end of the day sometimes systems can go bad not because it's your fault, it's just because that, that system was already on its way going out. So one of my challenges is actually just trying to get the customers to understand that. Um, another challenge is another challenge is um doing everything do, doing a lot of things at once and not really timing in how I get things done. So I would I honestly got myself burnt out for for just getting around the clock trying to do it. Where, whereas I could have maybe just fit in more time to do that that certain amount on that day or that hour and get other things done. So that'd be mm-hmm. one, my other challenge. And I think that the, the I think another challenge would be actually getting clientele. Well, this is now 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 has gotten a lot better because from the time I started in 2020, 2021 to now, it has gotten a lot better. But I would say getting clientele in general and marketing. Interesting. So that would be my challenges in, in that in that field. And the challenge with learning how to work with people oh, yes. is a challenge that is underrated. Mm-hmm. And it's also one that I would say all entrepreneurs have to overcome because unless you know how to manage and deal with people you will never be able to provide the service that they need so i think that is actually one of the major challenges that all entrepreneurs face 
and it's also a challenge that we must overcome. I agree. Right? And yes, I'm happy sir. to see that you have started to overcome th that challenge. Yes, man. All right. Now, you kind of mentioned a bit earlier on that you have a passion for cars. I know that you are heavy in the Lucian Tuna scene. First of all, tell yes. us what Lucian Tuna is and tell us where did your passion for vehicles come from? Okay, so Lucian Tuna now the media platform or the social media platform is, is actually a is actually a a place where can fishers can come to learn, to explore and to understand what's going on on the island and around the world about their favorite sports cars, performance cars and what's been going down and whatnot. So that's why um, we have the YouTube channel where I have videos of me doing reviews and reactions. We also have um, videos about events that show you like the different cars and how they perform and these types of things. Also have the Instagram page that ha that actually has like like a blog, like there's actually have, like blog posts for different things that I post up. Sometimes it'll be on an engine or, or a car or whatever. And we also, mm -hmm. also, it's also a place where people can get, can understand the practicality of this lifestyle. So it's not just buy the fast car and start racing. It's, 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 it's more than, it's more than, there's more to life than that. So that's what Lucian Tuna is all about. Lucian Tuna is, is that kind of enthusiast hub. Yeah, man. Um, and also for people that are into racing as well. It, we've, that's one of my biggest things for me. And that, that, that part. Um, what got me into cars was just, was just, I think it started from the curiosity of, of knowing what they could do. And I think it started with the game where my mom taught me that every time when they were younger, they said every vehicle that every um, number plate that they saw, once it had a double number, you would just call it out. So if you see 6 6, you call out 6 6, you say about 7 7. You know, just that game that, that we played. And then it went from that to, to just loving speed. Because when I was in school, I was called slow and not being focused a lot by teachers. And um not sending shade or anything but it it really make it really took me back and, and looked at something that i maybe could actually venture into to make me feel like i'm actually not being slow i'm actually going faster and so through that now through curiosity going faster and also like i being an it technician it technician it stuff and cast stuff actually intertwine a lot <laughs> so right that being said, it really pushed me towards that. So, like, I just seen that racing is an art, driving is an art. It's just, it's just amazing. It's just so that's why I just keep on pursuing that passion. It was just I mean, I've also met a lot of great people in the car community that have helped me with different things like life and advice and you know little things here and there, especially with car advice. Um, but all in all, it's that's how the passion grew. Interesting. I see that you know you have a big love for that industry. Yes, I do. But my question then would be, mm -hmm. since you love this industry so much, mm -hmm. would you ever consider venturing into it and becoming um, part of the industry full-time? Well, if I were to be part of the industry in general, I would choose the skill to be an... Well, if it's a full time, I would maybe say like like do like maybe do mechanical work and stuff like that for my personal endeavors. Or if I were to help other friend with a project car or something, I would, mm -hmm. I would go out and help. Um, in terms of like being full time in the industry, maybe I, I would I would consider being an engine collaborator. So like a normally an engine tuner they would call them. So like they normally would hook up their laptops to the OBD OBD two ports on the ECUs in the cars. I would not speak into jargon. <laughs> um, mm -hmm you connect it to the issues and you'll be able to manipulate the end fuel ratios inside the engine. Also, you can allow your engine to run more optimized or lean or rich and stuff like that for you to get better fuel efficiency, fuel economy. You can do that to increase horsepower, to, to increase your boosting in your turbo, turbocharger system or supercharger system. So, you know, you have like, you have that variety there. Um, I think another thing, maybe that might be full time. I, I would, I would, I was wanting to pursue, I always wanted to be a Formula One driver, but because of, me being a Christian, I hold my faith very personally and seriously. So I won't be mm -hmm. compromising my style of keeping days to go do qualifying rounds <laughs> for Sunday. Okay. So, but at least I'm happy that um, right now the Ministry of Youth and Sports are actually governing alternative sports so that we have a facility in Central that we can actually take part in motorsports on Sundays mm -hmm. and other varieties, you know. So I they actually have opportunities out there for me to be full-time in the industry.
Hey Game Changers, you know podcasting is such a unique platform to help connect with such amazing people from all over the world and you know build an amazing audience. But I know many of you are really wondering how do I get started? How do I get my episodes and my story out on all major streaming platforms? Well, I'm glad you asked. Buzzsprout is the answer to all your podcasting problems. We use Buzzsprout as a distribution hub and we couldn't help share it with you. If you click the link in the description, you can get started today. Even better, because you're my friend, if you sign up via my link, you'll get $20 worth of credit so you can use as you please. So what you waiting for? Click the link in the description down below to get started today. Hello everybody. I hope you're enjoying the episode. This episode was made possible through a platform called Riverside FM. It's a platform that I've grown to love and it really does justice to creators. Unlike Zoom or other platforms, it records content locally and then uploads it to the cloud so you have a seamless video. If you are a creator and looking to get into this space, this is the platform for you. Click the link down below. to get started today. Now, you also said that you are a singer, you are an artist. Yes, How did the passion for that come about? Okay so the passion for singing now um is I I think out of the out of the two passions other passion that I've literally been running I've been running away from but that's one other story but um that passion came about was growing, growing up in a Christian environment and I think that that was to live my my Christian background um you just happen to parents just be playing Christian music in the house all the time and then it just the day I just started I just started to sing the songs out there and then my parents so my parents kicked on in house and they're like hey Gideon you can sing <laughs> i was like um and i heard the voice i was like hey wow i can sing <laughs> and then it just went from there and then by the time i i turned like at time i was in like my late teens like 16 17 18 i started to write songs and sing you know everybody knows gdg <laughs> so mm-hmm. um yeah it went from there and then like from 17 i sang for the very first time at church by myself and then it just started to grow from there Thankfully along the way my brother picked up the piano and then we ended up coming together now and he thanks to him I was able to perform this year at Junior Jazz on a on a first day at Trinity nice. Park and the performance was amazing people loved it people were like boy Gigi G, why I didn't know you were so great and you uh, know why I could never forget oh shout out to Salty um gospel artist he knows he was there to witness the performance I remember walking up to him and he said that um He was like, yeah, boy, I see you. For the first time, I didn't even see you. I always see you and your brother singing and playing and stuff like that. And, and then he was like, yeah, boy, I see you do the singing and did the rapping. And I was like, yeah, boy, I say, when you did the rap, I was like, yeah, boy, go to park. <laughs> so all in all, that's where it really started. But again, thanks to my my young brother, that's that's extremely into music. A lot, I would say a lot more than me. But mm-hmm. because of him being there, like the passion always just been keeps on burning and burning because of that. So that's how it is for me there with singing. Nice. Now yes, I'm seeing that again you are a man of many passions. Now yes, Kevin sir. O'Leary from Shark Tank. Most people I guess would know him from Shark Tank. Mm-hmm. Once said that people who are into the arts often find themselves being better at their day jobs. Do you see a link between do you see it helping you to become a better person in your day job a better professional actually yes and i'm just talking that based off of what people have told me about told me about me i find that the fact that i've been doing that i've realized i've become a lot more focused a lot more disciplined a lot more um hey don't get me wrong i'm not perfect eh? right and it jesus <laughs> but but it honestly helped me out to be a lot more disciplined a lot more aware and a lot more like kind and caring and compassionate towards others which is actually very important 
And like overall, like because I've been pursuing all this and trying to always be at my best and to make sure I, I be at the top of it, right. it really helped me to shape my personality and character to help to, to to be better for others and for God and for overall my careers and whatnot. So yeah, it really it really did it really does it really have that effect on me, and I'm quite happy for that. Beautiful man. You see, so yes, sir. It's important to embrace extracurricular activities you know it's important to yes sir, it is not necessarily just fit yourself into one box right be diverse be willing to try of new course. things and i'm seeing that you know the fact that you were willing to try new things really helped you out yes man it really did so we're moving on to my personal favorite segment of a game changers interview it's called the quick hitters now, All I right. know that you watch the show. I know that you listen to the show. So you will know what quick hitters are. Yes, I do. But just for yes, my listeners who don't know what quick hitters are, these are rapid fire questions. So I'll be asking Gideon a set of questions that he should answer in 30 seconds or less. Okay? Are you ready, Gideon? All right. Yes, I'm ready to go. All right. So the first question. It's a three-part question. So you're, you're giving three answers. Sure. Each of them must be 30 seconds or less. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. So the first question is, give three quick tech tips. Go ahead. Okay. Let's go. So tip number one. Remember, know your field before you purchase a system. You're a video editor. Make sure you have a computer that is high in graphics. You are a business owner. Make sure you have a computer that works really fast and you can be able to get your documents done. You are a person that loves entertainment and gaming. Get yourself a gaming system. Get yourself a gaming laptop. Tip number two, always keep your systems clean, whether it be inside or outside. Keep them away from dust. Keep them away from debris. Make sure you wipe them down. You secure them properly. You put them back in the bag. Keep them clean. Tip number three, watch where you plug your system because it... Chances are there are times where there are certain circuits around your house or different power strips or different places where you plug your system to it. It may not be getting the, the right power, the right charge, and you can damage your power supply on your laptop or your desktop and you will not be able to have your, your down for a very long time. So please remember that. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I like that. Yes, sir. No, I didn't even realize of course. that you gave all the tips because you did it so quickly. All right. <laughs> well, it's a quick hitter, so I have to hit quick. <laughs> great, great. Okay, my next quick hitter question. What is the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? 30 seconds, let's go. Um, wow. Best piece of advice I've ever gotten. I've gotten so much, I've gotten so much good, great advice, man, because of the great people I'm around. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Lovely. And where is that taken from? Yes. Mm. It's taken somewhere in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Matthew. I can hear my Adventist friends already killing me. All my Christian friends already killed me already. I, I, I can't remember why, but it's somewhere in the Bible. We'll, we'll allow you, man. That's okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My next question, well, my final quick hitter question. Who would you like to see on Game Changers? All right, there are lots of people that I want to see on Game Changers, but I say the one person I would want to see on Game Changers would be Ron Fosua. Okay. Yes, young entrepreneur, good guy. I will allow you to tell a little bit about that guest. So go ahead. All right. So currently he owns one of the right. Currently he owns one of the one of the most successful Korea companies in Saint Lucia called Hair Today. Ah. He's a really amazing guy, awesome, patient, kind, and very enthusiastic about his work and passionate about it. Always on the go. So I would love to see him come to educate people on moving forward on game changers. Absolutely. And we look forward to having Ron yes, on sir. here. Right? Of course. Just make the link available, Gideon, and we'll have him on. Yes, sir. Okay. No problem. All right. So we're moving on to the back end of the interview. Gideon, with the rise of AI technology, what implications oh, yes. do you think this phenomena has on tech people like you do you believe it will lead to job loss 
Well, I'll be honest with you, Queen. AI is the new is is, is AI is something that that's not that people think it's new, but it's really not new, but it's actually new. If you understand where I'm coming from, AI has been a thing that has been around for years. And I can tell you something, AI will not lose the jobs of people because now AI can now be used to actually open doorways for people to actually design stuff that they need. So, for example, you can also, it also actually creates jobs where people can create AI systems. Now okay. AI is now more accessible. Hey, what if we now able to use AI to actually create better systems with better AIs and more AIs and then everyone else would be like a, a CEO or entrepreneur of a certain AI system because one person started doing AI. So, in other words, we need people to program the AIs. We need people to design the AIs. We need people to develop the website for the AI. We so there's still have jobs out there, and we still need people to access the AIs because there are people. There are lots of people, millions of people around the world that will not use AI, but they can get someone to use the AI for them. So, job loss, no. Interesting. Yes, I like your perspective. Of course. Okay, my next question, Gideon. How can people who are listening to this get mm -hmm. in contact with you? Okay, so they can contact me at my phone number, 1758584 0770. Mm -hmm. You can check me on WhatsApp. You can also contact me on Instagram at Gidi underscore pc repairs and installations that's for the it stuff if you like again if you're a kind of just into cars and racing you want to know you want to know a lot more you can follow me at at lucian underscore tuna 758 mm -hmm. and my personal ig out well i'll be more be doing more personal singing and stuff like that there um you can follow me at gdg forever on instagram facebook you can check out gideon's pc repairs and installations on facebook um, you can also follow the GDG Universe on Facebook as well. And you can also hop on the Lucian Tuna Facebook forum. You can ask questions about, about stuff there. If you have any thoughts on the show questions you have, you can join the group on Facebook. And you can also follow the page at Lucian Tuna Send 5 on Facebook as well. Great. And we'll leave the links. Yes. As per usual, down below, so people can get quick access to your stuff. Of course, not a problem. Great. Gideon, what's next for you? Well, Quinn, what's next for me? I'm actually looking to, to rebrand the tech company soon. Um, I'm literally in, in light of getting more down into the music as I've already gotten, gotten back on my feet with it. And um, just continue to create content for my, for my fans at Lucian Tuna and for them to have something to be not just entertained by, but something they can be educated by. Well, for everything else, because I also do tech tips on the tech page. So just to continue growing and building the content, having the, the ideas out there. And at the end of the day, when I when I become I financially, you know, free and all these types of things, although you never really make it, you just keep growing. I will be able to, I want to be able to help everyone else that, that needs things that they need in life, like either whether it be dreams, goals, whatever. I will to help them out financially. Nice. So that's where I'm going. Yes, sir. Lovely. And we look forward to seeing you achieving these goals. And I always pitch my guests, when you do smash those goals, make sure to come again on Game Changers and we can probably talk about that journey you took to get there. Right? Yes, man. No problem. I will. Lovely. Final question, Gideon. What would be your word of advice for a young person who is looking at this and wants to become as well-rounded as you are? What would your, your advice be to them? Well, I think my advice would be, first things first, learn to manage your time. I've been getting a lot better at it, but um, I still struggle. I'll be honest. Learn to manage your time. Learn time management. Um... Don't be afraid to 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 go out there. Like like just like take take calculate the risk. Don't get me wrong, but like don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fail. Like just careless. Just don't be afraid to fail. Just like create something. Put it out there. 
if it doesn't get likes, that's okay. If it doesn't get comments, that's okay. If it doesn't get shares, that's all right. At least it's there to say that. At least next time when people have to go through a history of things, they will see where you start. And like all in all, if you, I mean, if you are Christian, follow Jesus Christ and His teachings. Follow God. Let Him do. Let let Him do the rest for you. Do your part, but let Him do the rest for you because He's the offer definition of your faith, and He knows you from the end to the beginning. So whatever the will He has for your life, let Him let it be done. And Beautiful. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. Don't rush the process. Enjoy life. Beautiful. Yes. You know, I really like your perspective. This has been a fantastic you, interview, man. and to thank you for coming on, and to thank you for all you do. And I want to encourage you to continue pushing yourself forward. Thank you, sir. I will. Yes, man. And I just want to say thank you for having me on the podcast. Absolutely. Okay, yes, guys, this has been yet another episode of the Game Changers podcast. I know this time we only have audio. We ran into some technical issues, but I couldn't not bring you guys content, right? I had to bring you guys content. So this has been yet another episode. I hope that you enjoyed the listening. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you are listening to this on an audio streaming platform, remember to download the episode. You can listen to it on the go, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. When you download the episode, it becomes yours and you can listen to it whenever you please. So remember to download the episode. Thank you guys so much for coming on and as always, stay hungry and I'll see you next time.